Hello everyone, this is Tony Kwan. I'm the Trophy Wine Hunter and welcome to another one of my wine uh, video wine reviews. Today I'm reviewing another one of what I call wine standards. And what are wine standards? These are wines that um, I believe that every wine drinker should, should drink. Um, maybe for beginners, uh, it's good to, um, I'm trying to start with, um, kind of wine standards that are still affordable. Many of the wine standards right now are just not affordable anymore. Uh, so I'm trying to start with some that are quite affordable for people so that you can try them. Uh, what I mean by wine standards is you really got to drink, um, these wines to kind of, uh, kind of know the best in class of that wine. So today we're going to drink a quite a popular wine called the Cloudy Bay. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and this is a 2019 vintage at the liquor stores. It's a little bit over $30, $32, $34. Um, so this is really the prototypical Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Very important that you drink it. Um, if you, and really, like my last video on wine standards about uh, the Chardonnay de Pop, same type of idea, you know, you should drink this, if you don't like it, you won't like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. This is basically prototypical and the best of class for, for this wine type. Um, so just a little bit about it while I pour myself a glass. So it's not that old a winery. Um, Cloudy Bay was started in 1983 by David Honnan. Um, and so his first vintage was 1985 and it's named after, so Cloudy Bay, if you know New Zealand, it's got like two islands, kind of like the first main island as, and, a, and a higher island uh, up top. So it's of the main island, it's the most north part of that island. And it's an area called Cloudy Bay. So it's kind of interesting because Cloudy Bay was named by um, uh, one of the explorers. Um, it was named by... Uh, James Cook in 1770 and it doesn't a lot of people don't realize this it doesn't you're thinking well Cloudy Bay must be the bay is cloudy no actually it was named after the water and the, the waves in the water actually look like clouds that's why it was named Cloudy Bay and so it's the Marlboro region in um, in New Zealand and um, it's the way they make this wine is quite interesting they actually have 91 different plots and some of them are their own, some of them are other uh, growers. And they actually um, ferment each one and then they blend it, kind of like Bordeaux, right? So, they, or scotch. They blend all these different um, kind of plots of land so they get the right taste, the cloudy bay taste. So this wine really was the first, one of the first um, Sauvignon Blancs produced in New Zealand in 1985. And um, with every good wine, um, they have ups and downs and they also change. So that's the thing about wine, you know, when you look at wine reviews, if you see a wine review of Cloudy Bay from eight years, 10 years ago, it's useless. It's, it's, it's out of date. Uh, first of all, the wine style has changed. Secondly, the wine, even if that wine, um, you know, you, even if it didn't change, uh, 10 years of age on a wine makes a whole huge difference. So that's one thing I would uh, suggest to you. When you ever look at wine reviews or wine video reviews, it has to be current stuff because if it's five years old, it's, it's, it's useless. That's five years ago. Wine evolves, right? Wine gets better. It sometimes declines. Um, the, the style changes. And this is what happens with Cloudy Bay. So Cloudy Bay, um, basically the style started in 85, very oaked. Then they went to a kind of an oak style and now they're slowly getting back to a little bit a little bit of oak on it um, and it's really prototypical um, Sauvignon Blanc um, it's very specialized so if you smell it I'm just gonna go through a, maybe a little more history before I start so um, they kind of evolve and that's what you want for a good winery they always you want them to evolve you don't want them to keep the same and so when it first came out in 1984 385, the first vintage, and thereafter, it was like a really sought after wine. They only made about 60,000 cases at that time, and um, everyone loved it. And so, I think what happened is that people kind of got used to it and it kind of got out of style because it was so good that everyone loved it, and it was kind of like um, everyone loved it, so no one wanted to like it anymore because you're not cool if you liked it. So, it went through a, um, a period of time when it was uncool and you know other people were producing Sauvignon Blancs also they were different styles 
and they were cheaper. So everyone was like, wow, this is kind of old school. And, and, and so it kind of went out of style um, for a while. I think it's actually coming back in the style. And 2019 is what, an exceptional, exceptional vintage. So is 2020. So these are the two really great years to buy uh, Cloudy Bay. And, and it, we're, you know, we're lucky right now. We're getting good examples. So I would say that this is a great time to buy um, Cloudy Bay. Um, it is made from the Sauvignon Blanc grape. It has a little bit of Sauvignon in it. Um, and it does have a little bit of oak. So only about 3 to 7% of the... Um, entire wine crop is is Asian oak. Um, they don't want to over oak it. They want the expression of the wine to come through, but that oak kind of uh, softens things. So with Sauvignon Blanc um, in New Zealand, a couple of things can kind of go wrong um, it, with the weather. So if it gets too hot, the wine gets really flabby and kind of boring and uninteresting. There's no fruit on it. If it's not enough um, um, hot climate and not enough sun, It'll be very, very green and very, very acidic. So 19 was a great year for them. So if you watch online their videos, 19, they say, wow, it's a, you know, it's the spectacular vintage. 20 was a problem because 20 was just as good. So they said 19 was so good. So what do you say about 20? So 20, they say, you know, if you had a poker hand, that would be a full house. So both years are exceptional, exceptional uh, examples. And um, the other thing about um, Sauvignon Blanc and especially Cloudy Bay, since it's a made in a very classic style, it's ageable. Like, you know, you look at the ratings, I always say drink now, this is very ageable. Just like, uh, it's very similar to, um, it's the same grape type, along with different style, different ways stylistically than Loire Valley wines and also um, Bordeaux white wines. So those can age, so obviously this can age, and um, it can age up to 10 years. After that, it does decline. But so don't, you know, when you read things, I always thought, well, if it just, you know, if it says drink down, you got to drink now. No, you can age seven year Blanc, especially with this type of quality. So I'm, just, I'm having a hard time not talking about it yet, but I'm just enjoying it right now. Um, it was actually taken over in 2003, bought by um, the Verve Clicquot uh, people. And if you see my other wine, uh, my other reviews about Verve Clicquot, you'll know it's a very, very uh, quality producer. And that rolled into the LVMH family in 2015, which is the Louis Vuitton family. So some people, again, this is probably why the wine kind of um, saw a decline in interest because it was a standard for so long and uh, it was so sought, sought after and then it got boring. It was so good every year that it kind of got boring. It's always over 90 points on Wine Spectator. It's always got the same quality. So people kind of got tired of it and they were looking for new stuff and then this you know they got perfectly caught bought it and then Louis Vuitton it rolled into Louis Vuitton so they're saying well it's a big company it's all commercialized these guys are no longer you know wine makers they're just fancy brand makers that's not true at all but you know that's the perception it got boring and, and I got caught up in that too I haven't drank coffee big for many years because you know you thought well it's always the same um, but they have made innovations they have made a better product um, the other thing that uh, happened is that because they produce more, it's easier to find. So before, you know, you go back 10 years, it's very hard to find um, Cloudy Bay. Once it came to the stores, it was gone. Now they've upped the production from 60,000 cases to about 100,000 cases a year. Um, so people, it's not, it's not a rush anymore. There's not um, that, there's more supply and people kind of feel, well, if it's in the shelf, it's not as good. So it's not as exciting, right? Because I do remember, you know, 10 years back when seven, when the Kali Bay came in, there wasn't very much, you had to grab it right away. Now you can get it all the time. And so that perception is, well, it's a cheaper label or it's not as good quality. No, that's far from the truth. In fact, it's a great label. It's a great wine. Um, it's produced, there's more of it now because they have more growers dealing with it. Um, the quality is just as good, but you know, for some reason, it, the perception is it's not as um, specialized, it's not as special anymore. It's a great wine. And that's why um, it's a very unique wine standard that you can still, it's affordable to drink. It's only about $37. It's a great, great wine. Um, yeah, so, I don't know a lot of talking about it. So one of the things that they're actually doing is they're um, trying to get, go um, herbicide free and they're trying to do that by 2025. So they're starting to do that. Um, when you do 
uh, when you when wines become organic or vineyards become organic and they get rid of herbicides or pesticides it does make a difference in the wine the wines do taste fresher um, the style again has it i feel that in the past it was much more um a solid style more a little bit more flabbier it's really bright now so the stylistically i think the wine has changed and the progression has been on the good side it has adjusted to people's tastes and that's the thing about wines right wines are made for the taste of those times so in when the 80s when they started out oak was really popular you know people liked oak nowadays people like freshness so i love that one that wines grow and they don't try to just you know continue on with the same formula when it doesn't work it they have adjusted and that shows their kind of ingenuity and the progression of the wine which is always really interesting right and uh, so if you haven't drank cloudy bay for a while i do encourage you to drink it it's uh it's a breath of fresh air uh, i haven't i personally i have the same problem i haven't drank this for many years because i'm thinking it's the same wine it's not it's a quite a nice wine and again this is a very good example of it so on the nose you get a lot of fresh um a lot of freshness it makes you salivate already it's very um lots of uh what they call stone fruit and when we call it stone fruit it's like fruits with pits right so apricot um you get a little bit of um, tangerine uh, lime and then you get a little bit of the fresh cut grass and so not um and almost even a little bit of the like green peas but this is really fresh like it's not like um moldy grass fresh cut grass is a is kind of herbaceous but in a good way um but you can smell the acidity and you can smell the fruit the really um f um the stone fruit the really ripe sweet fruit in it you can smell it and it makes you salivate just by um smelling it Yeah. So just by, I'm not talking yet, I'm still enjoying the taste. So this is how long the aftertaste is. I'm still enjoying the aftertaste. So, so on the palate, good acidity, good balance, great balance. So um, one of the things with a lot of um, New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs I find is they're very acidic to a point where it's like, you're almost like crying. That I to me that's not good. I mean, if you want to cry, just and you want to bite on a lemon, that's great. But I, why would you want to punish yourself like that? This has got good acidity, but it's got good balance. It's got weight. It's not like a light wine. It's, I'm gonna see what the alcohol. It's thirteen percent, but it's got some weight to it, right? Um, lots of fruit, um, very sweet fruit, and it's got some citrusy elements, but it's got a lot of sweet fruit on this but peaches, um, nectarines, that's what I'm thinking of, like almost um, almost some guava type. Okay, yeah, just a delicious wine. Um, and what I find actually now, in thinking back to when I used to drink this wine, it used to be a little bit more edgy, I think they've taken off the edge a little bit. It's much smoother wine right now. It's very tasty. Um, great aftertaste. Um, it's got um, some grapefruit elements, some citrusy elements, but I'm a person that doesn't like grapefruit. So it's very subtle. It's very balanced. It's almost like Bordeaux-esque. If you like Bordeaux wines, this is kind of... And um, it's really soft and it's really very balanced. That's all I can say about it. Um, so I really love this one. I really encourage you to drink it. Um, in terms of pairing, you can pair with all types of food, fruits, cheeses, um, sushi. Um, that's what I'm going to do tonight. Eat it with sushi. I'll drink it with sushi. Um, salads, um, chicken, lots of stuff. In terms of points, um, definitely over 90. Um, wine spec rates this 93 points. I don't disagree. It's 
to me, uh, this is my first drink of this, um, at least 91, probably, yeah, I would agree with the rating. It's a good, good wine for the price. And I really think I encourage you to go out and drink it. Um, so hope you've enjoyed this review and uh, keep watching. Uh, please tell your friends and please subscribe if you haven't. Um, and hope to see you next time. Until next time, happy drinking.